in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on faith centric message if you're new to this channel I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you for graces are going to be imparted unto you and then God is going to visit your home thank you for watching My deliverer is coming, my deliverer is standing by. Your deliverer is coming, your deliverer is standing by. Let me tell you something. This God you see is a mighty God. And when God is ready to stand up and deliver a man for his name's sake, it's a fearful thing to see the warrior dimension of God. He is not only a lamb, there is a lion. When God decides, he says, let God arise. Let God arise. The only way you make him arise is to make your enemies his enemies. For as long as they are your enemies, they will not arise. They, he will only arise when they become his enemies. And the only way to make your enemies his enemies is to become his friend. Then you become an ally. Let God arise. And let his enemies, he will not arise for your enemies. When your enemies become his enemies, when they threaten something your life is supposed to do that produces his glory, now they become his enemies. When they threaten your passion for God, your passion for kingdom come, they become his enemies and the bible says god is able to arise he sent his angel and the angel came and opened that prison door watch this now he came out of a place of bondage but he had not entered rest when he came to the place where he would find rest they were praying and they were excited but there was no discernment he knocked and a young lady came and opened the door Rhoda, when she saw him, in excitement, she closed the door. Look how powerful the early church were. Do you know what they said? They said it's his angel. That means it was, a, it was a very, it was a usual thing for them to have angelic encounters. No, if he's an angel, just leave him. He's doing his work. Let's keep praying. If an angel knocked your door, will you not open and say you are welcome? What did God say? No, it's his angel. Don't let it distract you. Angels are just doing their things. Let's keep praying. And then the Bible says, Peter kept knocking, kept knocking, kept knocking, kept knocking until they finally opened and when he entered, he found his rest and they were astonished. Listen to me. There is a dimension of the priesthood ministry of believers that is responsible for the opening of doors and gates. Many believers are not able to triumph over obstacles and swing wide even ancient gates because even though we pray, we have not sustained the power to travel and remain until victory is wrought in the spirit. There has been all manner of teachings from well-meaning people across the body that communicate an idea that when you stay persistent in the place of prayer over a matter, that sometimes it may reflect unbelief. I do not agree with that. Scripture tells us that Jesus went to pray in Gethsemane. Why? Because shortly he would be descending to Hades, the place of the dead. And he prayed, the Bible says, he prayed three times repeating the same words. Are we together now? 
The challenge with believers is that we do not pray enough and stay true in the place of travail and prayer until victory is wrought in Christ. Now, let me teach you something. I know that your, your pastor has done an excellent job opening up to you the reality of Scripture. Many believers are confused about the dynamics, the administration of the kingdom and God's power, maybe because of the way that the truth of Scripture is taught um, across the body of Christ. This is by no means a way of creating any divide or any trouble, but this is just because I'm teaching in a conference. Most believers confuse what we call the finished work of Christ. Realities from God's standpoint versus their experiential manifestation. If you, not understand, if you don't understand this, you will live a defeated life forever. Listen carefully. The finished work of Christ refers to every dimension of victory that was wrought in Christ on account of his death, his burial, his resurrection. The substitutionary sacrifice of Christ did not just administer eternal life to the saints. No. It brought in experience back that dominion and that victory that man gave to Satan. Are we together now? So it's a fact and it is truth that in Christ, every dimension of victory that the believer seeks, as far as excelling in this realm is, con is concerned, it is already a reality from the standpoint of God. But what believers do not know is that the administration of that finished work has a dynamics attached to it. This is what we teach. There is a dynamics to the administration of it. For instance, the Bible says from the foundations of the earth, the lamb was slain. So what did Jesus come to do? Because in God's mind, that was already done. But that reality then could not save man. Jesus had to come in the flesh to act it out for 33 and a half years. What he was doing was not adding to what was in the mind of the Father. He was executing what was in the mind of the Father. That's why he was called the Logos of God, the thoughts of God in expression. It was his death, his burial, his resurrection, his ascension and his enthronement that brought about what we call today the victory of the believer. Now, but as powerful as that is, in God's mind, nobody on earth should go to hell again. Why? Because the sacrifice for our salvation is finished. Yet every day people fly and swim to hell. Is that true? They are going to hell. Does not make his power or his sacrifice less than the truth. But because they do not understand the system of administering that life to themselves. The system of administering that life is found in Romans chapter 10 from verse 8 to 10. If you ever become a recipient of that life, you must follow that code of administration. The word is near thee, even in your mouth and in your heart. The word of faith that we preach, 9. It says, if you will confess. This is how the administration of the life of God is imparted in the believer. You have to confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. Then believe with your heart that God raised him from the dead. It says, thou shalt be saved. The law is in verse 10. With the heart man believes unto righteousness. And then with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. The word soteria. Not just salvation like new birth. Any kind of salvation whatsoever. Are we together? So even though the finished work of Christ is a reality. If you do not find yourself subscribing to this administrative system. You will go to hell. In God's mind. No believer should be sick because the same cross that paid for sin paid for sickness. But there are still people sick today. And your being sick does not mean God lied. It only means you are a student in the school of the spirit. Evolving into that state where the reality of that, that word will be true in your life. Are we together? Why am I saying this? There are many believers who just believe that because they have found what Christ has done automatically. It is administered into their lives. This is a very subtle but dangerous dimension of deception. So we have people who never are able to experience the fullness of the life and the power of God. There are many believers who are poor, who are broke, who are struggling. 
and yet they study all the time that the blessings of Abraham belong to them. The Bible says, Galatians chapter 3 and verse 29, it says, And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So there is no confusion that we are partakers of the blessing that is upon Abraham and his seed, that seed being Christ. But just because that is a reality, it does not mean that you walk in the fullness of it automatically. No. Jesus said, if it is true that you are the children of Abraham, you will do the works of Abraham. The works of Abraham refer to the participatory conditions that he met for that blessing to be actualized in his life. So we, there are so many things we continue to claim. We continue to claim. We continue to claim. And yet our lives remain, we remain victims of situations and circumstances. Oh, I know in the name of Jesus I am all right. And yet things are clearly showing you are not all right. I am favored and there's no iota of favor for decades. I'm moving forward and all we see is retrogression. Let God be true and all men lie. So when we teach the principles of the kingdom, we teach them because those realities are already finished. Access does not mean experience. Listen carefully. There is a difference between access and experience. What Jesus did on the cross gives us access. Our faith, the participatory action that we take, makes it our experience. Forever, O oh Lord, thy word is settled, not in your life, in heaven. It takes faith and the operation of the principles of the kingdom to make it settled in your life. If you are learning something this morning, say amen. amen. So we must open up our hearts on the strength of everything that Christ has done. And the realities that have been purchased, the possibilities that the believer, the believer can step into now on account of Christ's finished work. That is what we call grace. Grace is not just unmerited access. Uh -uh. Grace refers to the storehouse, the compendium of everything that makes God, God. Power is grace. Mercy is grace. Anointing is grace. Wisdom is grace. Grace refers to that central storehouse that contains every possibility that is in God given to the believer only through the office and the person of the Christ. Grace gives you access, but faith, and faith there does not just mean confession. The entire participatory process of a believer that shows your obedience to the principles connected to that promise. So for every dimension of God's grace, listen carefully, there is a mystery connected to it. If it is speed, if it is restoration, if it is favor, are we together now? If it is the anointing, if it is influence, all of these possibilities are true in Christ. But for every one of these possibilities, there are mysteries and keys that connect them. Merely claiming the result without understanding the principles that lead to that outcome will be self-deception. And this is sadly the state of many believers today. Just because you saw the promised land does not mean you are in it. You can see it and yet never step into it. Are we together? In John chapter 3, when you read John chapter 3 from verse 3 now, it was a conversation between Jesus and Nicodemus. He came to him by night and said, Rabbi, we know that thou art a man sent from God, for no man can do these things except God be with him. Verse 3, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And Nicodemus answered and said, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb? And be born, verse 5, Jesus now uses another expression. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born of water uh -huh, and the spirit, he cannot enter. There is seeing the kingdom and there is entering the kingdom. You can see the kingdom 
and yet never enter into that experience. John 10.10 10 says, The thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill and to destroy. Jesus said, But I am come, verse 10, that ye may have life and that you may have that life more abundantly. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18. Inasmuch as Apostle John had told us that we are recipients of eternal life. Is that true? He told us that we have the life of God. But here Paul is mentoring the church in Ephesus. And he's teaching them something about the administration of the life of God. He says having their understanding darkened. Being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them. Because of the blindness of their heart. They are not able to step into the full potential of this life that they claim to have. Because of ignorance and blindness. Is God speaking to us? So believers hear me. It takes knowledge. It takes understanding of the mysteries of the kingdom. To actualize every reality that is meant for the believer in Christ. Merely believing that just because he did it. It is over is deception. I repeat, merely believing that just because it is finished in Christ, you do not have any participatory role is deception. Hallelujah. Amen. So here we are talking about the mystery that opens gates. And... We see from Acts chapter 12 that the church prayed. They began to pray and they prayed without season. Listen carefully. They prayed without season. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 17, please. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 17. 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse 17. Read with me God's people. One to read. Pray without teasing. One more time. One more time. Pray without ceasing does not mean pray from morning till night. You will be an irresponsible believer if you do that. It means be consistent in your prayer life. Be consistent. The idea is that of consistency. Be consistent in your prayer life. James chapter 5 and verse 13. Apostle James again was teaching us, buttressing on the ministry, the priesthood ministry of prayer. He said every time a believer finds out that there is anything that represents an affliction in your life, your first port of call as a believer is let him pray. You sense that doors are closed towards you. You sense that gates are closed. You know that prophecy does not seem to find the kind of expression in your life. He says to pray. Submit yourself to that prayer ministry and stay there until those gates are open. Prayer is powerful. It is God's recommended key that opens gates. From Acts chapter 12, we see that two strategic gates were opened. And all of them were opened by consistency. 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 The prayer of the saints made the gates of the prison to be opened. The persistent knocking of Peter made the other gates that led to his rest to be opened. Matthew 7, 7. Ask and it shall be given you. It's a law. These are spiritual laws that provided you ask, there is a guarantee that it will be given to you. Next instruction, seek and it leaves you with an assurance that you shall find. And then number three, it says knock. And it shall be opened unto you. Next verse. For everyone. Everybody say everyone. This is not an assurance just to men of God. This is not just to those in ministry. There are blessings that are for everyone. For everyone that asketh will receive. Everyone that seeketh. And everyone that knocks. It shall be opened. For as long as you knock. It shall be opened. For as long as you knock, 
it shall be open. For as long as you knock, it shall be open. Can I tell you this? There are victories in the life of every believer you see. There are gates, prisons of witchcraft, mediocrity. And it looked like no one could lift up his head. But in that family, you will usually find one person who will be tired one day and say, this pattern and this trend must end. And they may not have anyone or studying the Bible consistently. And just, I'm tired, I'm doing it, I'm not gaining anything. But I continue to be consistent. While I'm consistent in the name of the Lord, the dimension of the Holy Spirit that operates as the spirit of revelation is being attracted by my consistency. Who is this that is always opening scripture? One day, I will open that Bible and pff, from that day, it will not just be you reading again. This is how it is with the spirit of prayer and supplication. You can go to prayer and after five minutes, you think you've done one hour. And you check your watch, you say, no, this watch is not working. All this time, five minutes, no way. <laughs> Has that happened to you? I like this church, you don't tell lies. You prayed, sang, danced, and everything was under five minutes. And you vowed that day that you do three hours. Ah! Now you are calculating and wondering what in the world. And then you pray again. And then you pray again. And then you pray again. And you just think you are praying in the flesh. Until one day, you stand there to pray. And it becomes a vigil, only you. That day is not you again. That is the kind of grace that comes upon you that even while you are sleeping, as you turn to the left, you are sleeping. You are not even aware. Let me tell you this. Everywhere you see ease, there is a spirit supplying it. When you see ease, it is because that person through the frequency, the, the law of consistency has attracted a spirit dimension. If a young man keeps stealing and is under the influence of a spirit, let me tell you how much he will steal. He will steal in a way that even if you hide the money under a carpet, he will stand there and just go and raise the carpet. He does not even know what is leading him. Have you seen people like that? You will hide anything anywhere. He just looks as if he's joking. Because he's under the influence of a spirit he does not know. It's the same way you can be under the spirit of the grace for favor. And you just stand and say, no, I need to go to this person's house. Just when you get there, that's when your destiny helper is arriving. And people ask you, how come you get things so accurately? It is because you are under the influence of a spirit. So let me teach you something about prayer. When you hear that the early church prayed without ceasing, no human being sustains the power in the flesh to be consistent in prayer. Prayer is, a, is labor. Except you've not really prayed. Hallelujah. But when that spirit of prayer and supplication comes upon you, you pay attention and begin to pray. Do you know the mistake of Jacob in Genesis 28? He saw angels ascending and descending, but they were never coming to him. They were going to those who were calling for their ministry. That was why he was angry. How could that be so close to an encounter? And then the angels were said, the Bible never said they brought any message to him. Even though he had the voice of God, but he did not have any, he did not benefit anything. And he said, the Lord was in this place and I knew not. The next time, he did not let God go. 32, Genesis. I made that mistake once, I will not make it again. Leave me for the day break yet. He said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. Listen to me. Believers, we do not know the power that has been given to us in prayer and the, the omnipotence of prayer when it is accurately administered. You can swing gates open. The average believer thinks he's so weak when you don't have physical cash or when you don't have a political title. You see that now? 
our sociological context has indoctrinated us into believing we are just masses. We are just a flock. You read your Bible and see what ordinary men did through prayer. Elijah, the Bible says, was a man of like passion. He was hungry. He went to toilet, just like any other person. But the Bible says that he prayed earnestly, earnestly, the key word there, earnestly, that there be no rain. Notice in all this prayer, the prayer points were consistent. Not this today and that tomorrow. Peter should be delivered. That was a prayer point. They stayed there until he was delivered. When Peter was knocking, he didn't follow the window and knock. He stood at that one door and knocked till that very door opened. The challenge with many believers is that we do not have the staying power. The ability to stay through and pray until you see the answer to your prayer. After three days, we route through another thing again. For everyone that knocketh, that door, that gate shall be opened. It was the consistency of the believers around Jericho. Why would God tell them to move once every day? Look how frustrating that is. I'm walking around Jericho. No noise. Nothing. I hope you know that Jericho was a city. Jericho was like Abuja. So when he said they went round, don't think it was just one small shop that they just went round in two minutes. When you go around Jericho, even you, you ask God, am I going to do this for six days? Do you not see that spiritual things require consistency? Elijah washed seven times. God, you are powerful. What is in the number? If he had washed six times, he would have left lepers. Six and then took the water the seventh time and just rubbed on his head. He was supposed to go in seven times. And even at the sixth time, there was no sign of healing. It was until he completed that seven times. Now, watch this. Imagine that God gives you an instruction to go around Abuja once every day from now till next week. I know when we read it, we think it's just a city with a fence that they just went around. And no noise. So the six local governments in this city, down from Guagualada, what's the other part after Guagualada? Abaji. Going around there, down near Karu, you turn and by evening you are around angry and exhausted. And God says, rest quickly. In the morning you are starting again. But while that was happening, in, they did not know what was happening in the eye. See, ba, the way spiritual things work, five minutes to their manifestation, it will still look like defeat. Whereas you have finished, you have, they scattered Jericho from the realm of the spirit. The shout was just a system to sink that building down. Consistency. So every day while you are praying, you hold hands with your wife. It's like a register you are signing. Next week, many of us today love God because of our mother's prayers and fasting. For 20 years, they did the same thing. Some of them even had the same position where they knelt and they prayed. They pray that God will find you. And one day in your rebellion, you just loitered around a crusade and stood there just to check for five minutes looking for your friend. And fire from heaven fell upon you there because everyone that asketh receiveth. Can I tell you this? Satan is the master of the flesh realm the sense realm. And so he can make you believe that the investments of prayer you are making is not bringing any result. The Bible says the word is quick and powerful. I've been praying over this issue for one month. Just when you are two days left for victory, you retreat. You know your answer is almost there when the frustration becomes highest. It's an agitation from hell. It's one of the ways you know seasons are about to open. There is a heightened level of frustration. Everybody is annoying you. Your husband annoying you. Your wife annoying you. Everything annoying you. When that happens, keep at it. It's a sign to frustrate your consistency. Believe me, I know what I'm saying. Fight. 
Father, build your church. Bring revival upon this city. Church history is full of men and women who seem powerless, but they prayed. Men like John Knox, who used prayer to overturn Scotland. Most of the evangelists who had gone to be with the Lord now, before they would go for a crusade in any city, there would be at least three months of fire from intercessors. They had a band of intercessors who would pray. They would usually carry the map of the city where they are going to and drop it on their prayer altar. And they are praying everywhere. The powers that hold the destinies of people. The powers from the second heavens. When they finish that, their equipments can now go before them. And it's not the day they stand on that crusade ground that the sick are healed. They finished it since. They only came to manifest. Woe betides a man who uses the stage for rehearsal. The stage is not the place for rehearsal. Whenever God wants to build you, he will take you behind the stage and that's where you make the prayer investment. You don't stand on stage and that's when you are trying to learn about anointing and power. You are joking. Go and do your homework. When you come out, then you are ready for action. There are gates, hear me, that refuse to open for your father. He knocked it all through his lifetime. It did not open. Refused to open for your mother. And they all step back. Now God is raising you. Let me tell you what to do. I know what you do. Do what they did not do. They prayed only for two weeks and gave thanks and went back. But for you, hold on to the horns of that gate. And say, I have come with grace from heaven. What is this pattern of barrenness in this family that will not leave? What is this? Marriages don't seem to work. Everybody returns back to their father's house, minus me. And not only me, I'm not just here to open this gate. I'm here to scatter it so that anybody, see, if it opens for you, they can close it again. But when you scatter the gate, everybody behind you can pass. Can I tell you this? It was Bishop David Oedeku who said, no matter how mad a man is, he will not enter fire by mistake. He can be mad enough to misbehave, but set fire, and there will be a level of decorum and behavior. He makes his angels wings and his ministers flames. One thing I know about fire is that there is no metal it cannot melt. No, if fire refines gold, what else? Exact fire upon that gate. Exact fire upon that altar. And watch what I'm telling you, believers don't pray. We lament, we close the door and roam around. But we do not engage with the spirit. You are not praying blandly. There are forces that stop helpers from coming to your life. There are forces just when they're about to sign something that becomes an open door. These forces use men and systems and structures. Lift up your head, O ye gates. It's not just a pronouncement. There is an activity that you must engage in. Prayers was made by the church for Peter. Prayers was made by the church over the areas of your life. There are areas that if you sit down and allow the devil to keep oppressing you, let me tell you this, Satan is a determined person. He would destroy anything you allow him to destroy. When it was time for the nation of Israel to leave, they said, we will allow you go, but keep your wives behind and keep your children. Moses said, I didn't hear you well. Everybody, everybody and everything. I'm not going to live with my health and leave my finances behind. Everything. 
I'm not going to live with my character and leave my influence behind. Everything must move forward. Hear me, brothers and sisters. By the grace of God and by the privilege of God's mercy, I am a testament of what prayer can do. No. Until you get to take your prayer life seriously, you will see cheap victories in the spirit. You will shift systems and structures and align men and things to line up the purposes of God. Awake, thou that sleepest. This spiritual slumber and laziness is why gates continue to look as though they are strong. This morning for a few minutes, I want us together as a coordinated army to scatter some gates in this place. Hmm. Gates of delay. Paruske de haskada. Gates of shame and influence. Look at me. Please listen. Just help those under the anointing. Listen. There are people who are victims of these prisons that Peter was in. It is the women that feed the men where you come from. No matter how responsible they are, they go to America for 10 years and return back like they've never left their village. What of those who rise just when they get to the place where they should sit down? They come down in shame. They never come down normally. Don't say it does not matter. The one person that becomes the breadwinner. I remember one time something happened to a dear woman, her only son responsible gentleman he finished with first class he was returning back home and he had a ghastly motor accident died in that instance don't tell me that is the will of god i hope you know these gates we talk about they are mobile they are not just in one place they look for wherever you are and come and stand in front of you to help you. Where are you from? You look like you are my relative. Yes, sir. Meet me at the office tomorrow and those gates come and stand. By the next day, you go to the office and say, I can't remember. Where did I meet you? And you are wondering, what is going on? Some of you have been in this city for more than one decade and yet, the gates in the city have refused to open for you. Anything you do fails. You do business, it fails. You have been trying to build. You are still at the foundation level. When you were trying to build, the entire land around you was empty. Till today, you have not lifted it to Lintel level. Help them, please. Just help those under the anointing. Listen, I know this by the Spirit. Please give me volume and light. We are going to pray. This is a conference. We will take out time. The Bible says he has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in sunder. While you are praying, don't pray for yourself alone. Think of your children, born or unborn. Lord, let me pass through this once and for all so that everybody behind will not have to go through that shame. In one minute, I'd like you to open your mouth and begin to pray in the spirit. Please pray. Pray. Walk around. Pray. Be serious. Pray. Shelekete pakata barakatos, entelentes kabaratos koto prega dekatos yata. Shana kete benda kete barakatos, ekete pakata kato pakato koto prega dekata. Shalemente pakato brando kosko barikata. Skabarente kepeka tosko to prega de balada ba. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Are you ready to pray? 
Father, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare, decree and declare, by the blood of the eternal covenant, by the blood of the eternal covenant, every gate, every gate, standing my way, standing my way, standing in front of my path, standing in front of I my path, I declare you by the blood of the Lamb. Lift your voice and begin, and begin to pray. In the name of Jesus, every gate, we clear you, we clear you, we clear you. Shut up, shut up, every gate, gates of oppression, gates of oppression, gates of oppression, gates of oppression. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Please, if you can, pair yourselves into two. You're married, find your wife or find your husband or find anybody close to you. You are going to pray. Every gate standing in front of our home, it doesn't matter how long, by the blood of the co eternal covenant, we command those gates be destroyed. Lift your voice and pray. We decree and declare. In the name of Jesus, every gate, are you praying? Every gate, pray for the person who stands for holy. Every gate, gate as men, gate as oxen, we scatter you by the power of the Holy Ghost. We scatter you by the power of the Holy Ghost. in the name of Jesus. Amen. First Thessalonians 2.18. We are still praying. My God, there's fire in this place. First Thessalonians 2.18. 18. Please read with me, everyone. One, two, read. Wherefore, we would have come to you, even I, Paul, once and again, but Satan hindered us. Your favor is speaking. Since January, I've been looking for you, but there has been a hindrance. Your lifting is speaking. I desire to come to you. Are you ready to pray? Say, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare. I decree and declare. Every demonic hindrance. Every demonic hindrance. Stopping prophecy. Stopping prophecy. Stopping my blessings. Stopping my blessings. From reaching me. From reaching me. This day, this day, I declare, I declare those powers are destroyed. Those powers Lift are your destroyed voice and begin to pray. Jesus, I declare every gate, every hindrance, every hindrance, every hindrance, Sagana, 
In the name of Jesus, lift your hands. We are still praying. Just lift your hands. I'm seeing chains on the feet of like four or five people. I'm stretching my hands now. These chains, these things have to do with ancestry. They have tied some of you so that you will not move forward. Right now, fire. Fire. Fire from heaven. I don't know who that person is, but in the name of Jesus, anyone here who is a victim, help them. Makatos ketetea, maretos kida, chains be broken, chains be broken, chains be broken, chains be broken. Bring them out. We're praying. Shabakata bakata. Every chain, chains of ancestry. Witchcraft, orchestrations of darkness, ill speakings of men, be broken. Shalika parakatosia, embreketes katebekata, skopotokoto, skopotokoto, Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We are still praying. The Lord is telling me to release people here who have been victims of delay. Everybody moves except you. I'm praying now. Please help those people because when I pray, some of you are standing in for your families. Enough is enough. Here at this conference, it's time for gates to be open. I declare at the count of three, Lord, anyone here at World Alive who is a victim of any kind of delay, at the count of three, I want all of you to shout the name Jesus. Are you ready? One. Two, three, Jesus. delay be broken. Break now. Break now. Break now. Break now. Break now. Break now. Shanakata, gates of delay, gates of delay, gates of delay. Be broken, be broken. Zaka taka le baba laga da baba da. Zaka taka le baba dosa de de ne. Shaka taya, leke tande ya, rika pale ya, esikatini ya. Hallelujah. We are still praying. Look at me. The Lord wants to destroy patterns. It happened to your father. Now it's happening to you. It happened to your mother. Now it's happening to you. By the blood of the eternal covenant, we have an advantage. Are you ready to pray? Yes, sir. 
In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every pattern. Every pattern. Following me. Following me. I declare. I declare. By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. You are broken now. You are broken. Lift your voice and pray. You are broken. You are broken. Lift your voice and pray. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Isaiah 60, verse 11. Isaiah 60. Read with me, everybody, by faith. Let this be a prophetic word for you. Are you ready? One, two, read. Therefore, thy gate shall be open continually. They shall not be shut day, day or night that men may bring unto me the forces of the Gentiles. And that their kings may be brought. Listen, one more time you are going to read it. But personalize it as a prophetic yes, word. Yes, are you ready now? Yes, One to read. Therefore, my gates shall be, shall be open continually. They shall not be shut day or night. That men may bring unto me the forces of the Gentiles. And that their kings may be brought to me. Hallelujah. Pastor, sir, please, if you would allow me, let, I want a few ministers prophetically. Please station them just as a point of contact. If you can stand just at the front of the gate of your church here, just prophetically while we pray. Maybe some of the people holding the mic, Shut just up, one, just prophetically, just stand at that place. You, we are sir. praying. We want to speak over this church that everyone connected to the grace upon this man, yes, sir. this must be your season Allah. for these gates to be open. Amen. Please position yourself there. We are going to pray. Yes, sir. Are you ready now? Yes, sir. Now everyone, we are going to pray that every gate that has refused to open yes, sir. so that helpers will come into your life, every gate that has refused to open so that your influence will manifest, we are declaring over your life and over what are life. Are you ready now? Yes. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We decree and declare. We decree and declare. As members of this commission. Of this commission. We stand and we declare. And we declare. Word alive. Word alive. Your gates. Your gates. Are open. Are open. Continually. Continually. Bringing influence. Bringing, bringing wealth. Bringing wealth. Bringing increase. Bring Lift increase. your voice and begin to pray. In the name of Jesus.
there is a grace for speed. There is a grace for speed. You write this down. You will marvel and wonder and see the way God will begin to honor men to testify in this assembly. Hallelujah. That doors just begin to open. But I want to release that grace as we pray. Please don't be distracted. Father, I stretch my hands. Standing in faith with your choice servant, Reverend Godwin Abba. We declare in the name of Jesus Christ that anyone here who must drink of this oil and this grace at the count of three right now. Let speed speed upon your life. One, two, three. Take that grace. Take that grace. Take that grace. Take that grace. Help them, please. Take that grace. Speed. Speed of accomplishment. Take that grace. Speed in business. Speed in ministry. Speed. 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 I prophesy. I declare. Help them. Help them. Please help them. Speed. Whether you're an usher or not, God just help them. I declare speed. Word of life. Speed. 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 Speed in career. Speed in your spiritual advancement. Ten years in one year. 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 Please look up. We're almost rounding up. Now, look up, please. The Bible says Peter came out of the gates, the prison that made for captivity. But when he now came to the place of rest, he knocked. And they refuse to open. Are you ready to pray? There are times that you may not have the power to open the gate. You only have the power to knock. It will take somebody already inside yes, to open for you. you. Listen. Joseph had the ability to interpret dreams. But it did. Not have the ability to bring himself out to stand before the king. He had to depend on someone who you are going to do it. But you are going to speak to your north wherever north is. Turn to the south. Turn to the east. Turn to the west of Abuja and any territory. I like you to prophesy that anyone ordained by God. In this season, to hold your hand yes, sir. wherever they are, yes, compel their ministry. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Stretch your hands, prophesy to the north. Stretch your hands, prophesy to the south. Stretch your hands, prophesy to the east. Stretch your hands, prophesy to the west. Locate me. My destiny help us. Locate me. My destiny help us. Locate me. Shadado. Lagada. Rekasata. Libre tu sacada, la catón de baba pronto con su ria valeta, mata capaya baja. My destiny help us locate me, locate me, locate me, locate me, locate me from every direction in the name of Jesus. Mande que sunda mario, eshalada, eshalada, eshalada. Yes, yes, yes. 
In the name of Jesus. Come. Let's look up. I want to teach you something. Look at me, everybody. A time came in my life. Prayed with all my heart. Listen carefully. And the Lord led me to a scripture that I want to lead you to now. Acts chapter 10 and verse 4. Acts chapter 10. A certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band. These two things, his giving and his prayer. He saw in a vision evidently about the ninth hour of the day, an angel of God, God coming to him and saying unto him, Cornelius, verse 4, when and when he looked on him, he was as a memorial. Listen, I can tell you in hand with stamp of the enemy. Now listen to me. This is no manipulation at all. Your pastor is a man of integrity. But I love you too much to not tell you the whole truth. There are gates. There are gates. Prayer goes along with a level and a measure of sacrifice. That he was, and it was a sacrifice. I had been praying, God had helped me. That it was time to break some territorial doors and sacrifice by the privilege of God's grace. I was able to go. It was there are sacrifices that when they leave you, you too will know this is Isaac, not Ishmael. Remember when I came out to enter the car, so I would come out of that vehicle and it said I should place my hand on the ground, on Canaan land, on the ground there. I placed my hand on that ground and the Lord spoke to me. favor upon my life. You've heard my stories. And, and see they wanted to buy sugar cane. I wanted to buy it too. And I said, Mama, no, you are my mother's. Let me honor it. And I paid for them. And they kept blessing me.
listen, my dear. Ito. Seeds and sacrifice. Imbalances here in the body of Christ. People have taken advantage of people. But anybody who truly loves you and is teaching you the warfare dimension of the morning session we're wrapping up you have prayed most of you here God has brought victories for you I want to challenge you you know me I'm not I'm not the kind of person who would Lord, I'm coming with a sacrifice, not a seed. But you must tie any unfavorable thing you are some causes on it. They are dropping that seed to kill that season. When you carry it, you don't allow the season die. You carry that. That's what happens for somebody. I have ended. Had seasons in my life. And I have introduced certain seasons of favor. You have seeds now of sacrifice. I will start. I'm the, I'm the first. Who will start? Some of you are following online and you are saying, Apostle, I am tired. Favor. But I'm telling you, if it is levels of increase that you want to step into, Sincerely, you will marvel and wonder at what happens to you. This is true. Are we together? I'm going to speak over you. Go ahead, you can do that during this. Maybe the last session tomorrow. There are offering baskets here. Let me request, please. Those of you. following online or some of you are here there is a church account be careful take moments like this and thousands of people you will find all these funny people doing all kinds of things online Lord, I want to end seasons in my life I'm going to pray for you. If you will not redeem it, don't write anything. Don't say I'm coming to give God a mirror and just be emotional. And don't do what you are doing just emotionally. No. But I stand by the God of heaven and I tell you sincerely, if you dare to honor the Lord with your sacrifice, I'm going to speak over your life. Some of you, it will, it will not be more than one week before you see the strange things that God does in your life. Are you ready? So, maybe in, how, how do we do it now? I'll give you two minutes. Two minutes. If you have a seed here, and you are saying, Lord, I am ending in my life. There, can we use these this offering baskets? Okay. There are two offering baskets here. You can leave your seed. Hold on, please. And, okay, there are other people holding seeds here. You come and drop them. And if you are using the account, use the account. If it's a pledge between you and God, whatever it is, please do not do this emotionally. We are people who fear God. One day we'll stand before God and we'll be judged. Are we together? But I want you to release your faith and I want to pray with you in the next two minutes. If you are coming out, come out now. God bless you. 
believe they have come. If there's no space, you can just stand at the aisles. Cried. Some are currently in debt. Some are standing here with all kinds of issues. Maybe legal issues. Lord, Right now, I stand in faith with the angel over this house and his I stretch my hands in the name of Jesus Christ. By your prayer and your sacrifice, I So breakthrough. Mahashkadabala, new seasons of favor. Prophecy and I life. I call it back to your life in the name of Jesus Christ. And hear me, everyone here who is using this seed to break cycles that you saw in your family patterns that you saw in the life of those who have gone ahead of you. I stand by faith and in the in the name of Jesus. Those cycles are broken now. Those cycles are broken now. Those cycles are broken now. Circles of re circles of poverty and hardship. Circles of servitude. In the name of Jesus, be broken now. And right now, we command: May those gates swing. May they open tita and hither. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father honor the seeds and the sacrifices of your people. May it rise as a supernatural incense. Satan, by this sacrifice, we put a sanction and we decree and declare that you have no legal access to the lives, the finances, the destiny. In name I pray. Amen. Drop your seed with thanksgiving quickly and return back. You can drop it with the offering back. Ask at the altar anyway. Just make contact and please return back to your seat as we prepare. We are still praying. Again, the account details are on the screen. For those, I don't know if there is a domiciliary account for phones. Please, very quick prayer points, and we're done.
this is right before they came in. They soon wrap up. Oh God, you are my God. And I will ever praise you. Oh God, you are my in the morning. I will learn to walk in your ways. For step by step, you lead me, and I will follow you all of my days. Listen, there's no time to turn to the scripture, but pay attention. When Joshua received his commissioning from God, he told him he was going to take Jericho. But before then, two things happened. And I want to introduce them quickly and we pray. The first thing that happened was he needed a strategy for the defeat of Jericho. The defeat of Jericho. He would not use his own formula to bring down the gate and even the walls of Jericho. And so the first assignment God gave him was circumcise yourselves. Look up please everybody. Listen carefully. He said some of you who came out, there was a generation of the men who came out that were not circumcised. You cannot attract the backing of heaven. He was telling Joshua, therefore get knives. Circumcise yourselves. You want heaven to reveal the strategy to bring down the gates and the wall. It is not without a circumcision. And when he said that Joshua gathered the men and all of them as a people, they circumcised themselves. And whilst they circumcised themselves, they stayed there until they were healed. Suddenly, a being came and said, Joshua, now that you have fulfilled the law of circumcision, you are ready to receive the strategy. This will be the strategy. Go around Jericho seven times, once every day. And on the seventh day, you will go around with the ark in front of you. And then you will raise a shout. Let me tell you this. There is a reason why many people do not experience the backing of heaven to come and reveal prophetic strategies that make for destiny. It is because many times that circumcision, circumcision is a painful process, whether for children or adults. Is that true? Yes, sir. The cutting away of the flesh. Seeing then that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, he says, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that doth easily beset us. And let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, it says. Looking up to Jesus, who is the author, the finisher of our faith. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross and even despised the shame. You cannot do God and something else. No. You can't have one arrow in your house that was given to you from the village. And add it and combine it with God. You cannot want the blessings of God and you are playing pranks in the office and so don't feel offended. There has to be a determination for that circumcision. The cutting away of everything you know that sustains the ability to drive away the backing of heaven. If heaven does not back you, there cannot be the strategy. Men reign and they dominate in this kingdom on the strength of the strategies they receive from heaven. Whether for ministry, whether for business, including idol worshippers. They go through the requisite levels of sacrifices and then spirits come and back them. You're going to pray a prayer of genuine rededication and say, Father, my life and all that my destiny is about is about Jesus, Jesus only, Jesus ever, 
you remain my priority. Everything that is not you, I cut it away from my life. Don't say I've been born again for 10 years. That's not what I'm asking you. Are you ready now? In one minute, cry your heart and say, Father, I cut away. Let there be that circumcision. Let there be that genuine circumcision. Please pray. Those following online, pray that same prayer. That circumcision by the Spirit. Relationships. One minute you are praying to the God of your salvation. It is all about you and only about you, Jesus. nothing you can't do oh lord my eyes are on you be magnified oh With all my heart, with all I am, I will seek to honor His command. I pledge allegiance. If there is anybody here under the sound of my voice, I do not want to take for granted. That even though we've all prayed a prayer of rededication and consecration, there might be one or two people here who are saying, Apostle, I love Jesus, but I've not won that war. I cannot say for sure that things are all right between me and Jesus. Before we pray the final prayer, no matter where you are, do not be ashamed to win that war. Or you are saying, Apostle, I know that I need a new and a fresh walk with Jesus. You have one minute wherever you are. I'd like you to leave your seat with boldness and confidence. Please come and stand before me here. Don't wait for someone to be the first. This is a family of faith. Welcome. The Lord is calling you. What a life. Let's celebrate them as they come. Come to Jesus. I'll just count one to four. Two. Don't be ashamed. Win that war. Stand before him. Come, please. I have decided to follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning back. The world behind me. The cross before me, no turning back, no turning back. The world behind me, the cross before me, no turning back, no turning back. I salute you, my dear brothers and sisters, for making this bold decision. The Bible declares that everyone who will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. I salute you for the confidence and the courage. Some of you are crying. Don't be ashamed of your tears. The Bible declares, I have loved you with an everlasting love. And I have drawn you with my loving kindness. I want you to lift your right hand before Jesus, who is our Lord and Savior. And I want you to say this after me. Let it be from the depth of your heart. You are not reciting a poem. Say, Lord Jesus, I come before you. Just as I am, I declare 
that I am unable to help myself. But I believe that you died for me. This afternoon, I declare that you are my Savior, you are my Lord, and you are my King. I receive eternal life ah, into my spirit. I receive the gift of righteousness and the abundance of grace. I reign as a Christian. I reign as your child. The power of sin, don't be ashamed of your tears, is broken over my life forever. I declare that I belong to Jesus. I go forward ever and backwards never. Amen. Let me pray for you. Father, we present to you these ones as a trophy. When you hung upon the cross, you saw all of us together. We were worth your death. We were worth now we have come to you to present these ones. They have become part of this family of faith. By the authority of scripture, I declare your sins forgiven. And I declare that the Lord gives you a new beginning. You are partakers of the life of God. I commend you to the ministry of the Holy Spirit and the ministry of the word. I decree and declare that you will rise to the fullness of your prophetic destinies. I bless you. You go forward ever and backward never. In Jesus name I pray. Amen and amen. Alright, please all of you in front just look at me. Congratulations to you. Please there's a counselor waving his hands. The man of God is waving his hands. All of you in concert, let's celebrate them as they go. A group of people will talk to you and you'll be back to your seat. Hallelujah. Last prayer and then we're done. I'd like you to pray and say, Father as proof that every closed gate has been opened over my life. Give me testimonies between today and tomorrow. Release your faith and pray. Lift your voice. As proof that these gates have been opened and my glory is ready to be revealed. It says, Thou, O Lord, that a shield for me, you are my glory, even the lifter of my head. Lord, give me a token. Give me a sign. In the name of Jesus, give me a sign. In the name of Jesus Christ. Before I get to my seat, I want to encourage you, please do well to participate in every session left. And let's release our hearts. Make whatever sacrifice you need to make, especially if you are not a frequent um, member in this church. For the sake of this conference, obtain grace to finish strong. Let's stand together and push as the balance of what God began to do in our lives that he will not only... Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salaska de Bashkana Katabranda Katekatos. Katebranda Katapakotosko to break a take and the The face of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.